Bibles, if you will, turn with us to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 this morning. 1 Peter chapter 2 this morning. We're going to be looking at verses 9 and 10. Over the last several, the last several Sunday mornings and Sunday nights, we have, uh, we have looked at and we have talked about, uh, we've talked about uh, um, prayer. We've talked about prayer matters. Prayer makes the difference. Amen. Prayer is what changes things in our lives. Amen. Uh, we've talked over several situations how that how that when we, when we take something to God in prayer, we've seen how that prayer is going to make the difference. Prayer is going to change things in hearts and lives and folks. Amen. Prayer is what does. Uh, does more than what what we can do. I could sit here and I could talk about something until I was blue in the face. I could go over the same situation, the same thing, uh, for days and days. But without prayer, it's not going to make a difference. Amen? Prayer is what matters in the church world today. Amen? I was talking to uh, someone uh, yesterday, or actually it was a Friday. We was talking, and uh, we was talking about how that there are, uh, there's been a lot of changes in the church world over the last ten to fifteen years, and and we've talked about how that uh, things have changed, things have uh, things have been different, things have uh, uh, some churches have grown and some have not, some have declined, some have done this, some have done that. I'm thankful to say that our church has grown over the last couple of years. I don't know prior to don't know the records don't know what but our church has grown over the last two years amen and it's all because of God amen God is what goes God is what drives all of that and how do we get God to drive that prayer is what matters prayer is what makes the difference amen we've talked about this over the last several weeks and there's been some things that we've brought out in in the messages over the past Sunday mornings and Sunday nights over the past several weeks and we've even talked about it some in our Wednesday night Bible study when we've been looking at the book of Romans and we've talked about how that one of the key things one of the things that has happened in the church world and I said this a few a few weeks ago and I said I will take the blame for this at Coosa Valley I don't care what's happened I don't care what's taking place I'm going to say I take the blame for this at Coosa Valley and I even made this bold statement and said this other pastors need to step up and they need to take the blame at their own local churches I I got re, uh, rebuttaled and all this good stuff refuted and uh, uh, all that from some pastors when they found out what I said but uh, that's okay the thing that we've got to see and the thing that I believe 100% that the church has lacked on is when a new when a, when someone comes and gets saved, they get saved and then we just turn them loose. Well, they get saved, they come to God, they get saved, and we just. I've had some churches that I've been in and some churches that I've seen and some churches that I've heard, and I even was told this one time. I had, I had, this is several, several years ago, I had, I had a couple that got very upset with me. There was a young couple that, uh, uh, that had gotten saved and, a, and another couple that was within our church. They came to me after this young couple came and they started coming to church. They got saved and they got baptized and they started coming to church. And, and this, th another couple came to me that had been in the church for a quite some time and they got very upset with me because I had not already put them in a, as a Sunday school teacher. I said, they've only been saved for four weeks. They said, that's three weeks too long. I don't know what planet that's from, but I firmly believe... Brother Hank, could you go get me an offering plate? I firmly believe that that has been what has been a big problem in churches in the past. It's because they automatically, someone gets saved, someone gets into church, and then all of a sudden we're just going to turn them loose with whatever, and then they drop out. I've seen this multiple times. Now, he, there's, there's, a, there's, there's, there's a little bit of money in here. 
Y'all, y'all watch this. Make sure I don't take nothing out. Brother Emmer, you got your eyes on this? Okay. All right. There's been, I've seen this happen a lot of times. I've seen this. You have a young man get saved and get in church. And I've seen the pastor would go to this person and they'd say, we'd love for you to be an usher. And all that the person would do is tote this from this point, tote it down the aisle, and hand it to somebody else. Now, Brother Hank, you toted this from the back all the way down that front. Are you okay? Okay. It didn't hurt your arm. Okay. I don't know what it is. Y'all, I'm, I know that's comical, and I'm, I'm being a little comical about this, but I'm being very serious about this as well. I don't know what has happened. We actually, over the course of four years, this has been many years ago, over the course of about four years, we noticed the number of people that the pastor would, that we would, you know, we would say, okay, we want you to be an usher. And they would take this plate. These are actually the same plates. I mean, the identical same plates as what we had at, our, at my home church. And they would give them this exact plate and they would ask them to, all you're doing is walking it from there down the aisle. That's it. And then, of course, you pass it down these little aisles and you, and you get your dollars and you get your tithe envelopes. And then you, 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 you store it somewhere. You get it secured. That was all that was done. And over the course of about four years, we counted upwards of almost 20 families. You think I'm exaggerating. I could name you the names. I won't do this. This is live feed. I'm not going to do that. But I could name you the names of the families that actually left the church within six weeks of picking this up. Let me tell you something, folks. Is that a problem with that person? I say no. I say that that is a failure, and I'm bringing it on to me, that that is a failure. Get this before somebody thinks I took something. I think that that is a failure on the church. And I'm taking the blunt. I'm taking that. That's me. But I'm going to pass some of that to the body. I'm going to go ahead and tell you this has been a very rough morning. This has been an extremely rough morning. And I will be honest with you. I'm being very honest with y'all this morning. You better not hold this against me because I'm being bluntly honest, brutally honest with you. If I hadn't have been the pastor this morning, I might would have stayed home today. This has been a very rough morning. But I'm going to tell you something. I sat there at that desk at about 8.10. Had not had a shower. I've had one now. I promise you. But I sat there at 8.10 this morning. And I said these exact words. Devil, you're not winning today. I know that over the last, the last several weeks, probably the last four or five weeks, we've talked about prayer matters. Prayer makes a difference. Amen? This morning, this is starting to talk about the essence of the church. What the purpose of the church is supposed to be all about. This is ta- we're talking about what we is the, not this building. We're the church, folks. We are the church. The church is a living, breathing organism. It is not inorganic like this table. It is organic and it is a living, breathing organism. And it is sitting on these pews and it is standing right here. It is watching on our live feed. It's those that are at home sick. Those that are in the hospital. Those that are in the nursing home. That is the church. It's time 
that we quit, oh me, oh my, and start looking at it's not about us, it's all about Him. It's not about me, it's about Him. This Sunday, I'm going to say something very, we're, y'all, you got your Bibles? Good. We're fixing to look at this scripture, but I want you to know something. I have felt like with my ministry, I, felt, I have felt like with my ministry all of these years, I have, I have done, I have, I'm not saying this to be boastful or pride for anything like that. I'm saying I believe that God has truly worked in our lives through our ministry to touch folks. Countless people have been saved, not by me, by God, through the ministry. Countless number of people have been healed. Countless number of people have have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Countless number of people have received what they need from God. Today's a new day. Today is a new season. And it's time that the church starts being the church. We said in January that we firmly, and I still believe it, 2017 can be the greatest year of the harvest that the church world has ever seen. 2017 can be the greatest year of the harvest that the church world has ever seen. And I firmly believe that it can start right here. I believe it can start this morning. But it's dependent on whether or not we want to be the church or we want to live in the same old, same old. I'm not ready to live in the same old, same old. I'm ready to move forward with God. Amen? Amen. Let's take a look here. I want us to take a look. We're looking at 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. If you will, stand for the re- those that can stand for the reading of the Word of God this morning. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And ten. I'm tired of playing church. I'm tired of pretending. I'm tired of acting. We need to be the church. We've got an obligation. We've got a responsibility. Amen. First Peter chapter two, verses nine and ten. Look at what it says. But you we could stop right there and preach a sermon. You remember 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, he's talking to the church right here in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, but you talking to the church are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Mercy, Dear Heavenly Fathers, we come to you again today. We want to thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Thank you for this opportunity that you've allowed us to come into your house to worship, praise, and magnify you. Father, this morning, for the next few moments as we're bringing forth your word, I ask you to continuously hide us behind the cross of Calvary, that those looking would see your Son, He being high and lifted up, that all would be drawn unto you. We forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' precious, holy, and righteous name we pray. And the church said, Amen and Amen. You may be seated this morning. Amen. Before anybody gets the wrong idea when I've said that this has been a very rough morning, no, me and Sister Kerry have not been fighting. Lord have mercy, I better clear that up now. Sister Frances will get on to me after church for getting on to, for, for arguing with Kerry. I don't want that. No, she's been sick. I want you to continue to be praying for her. Uh, we've got several folks connected with our church that are sick. We need to be the church and pray for those. Amen? 
said, call for the elders of the church. We're calling for the church to pray for those that are sick. Amen. Many of us, many of us sitting here this morning, we have been a part of a church, whether it be Coosa Valley Church of God or whatever the church may have been. You've been a part of a church for quite some time. Some of you have been, in, been involved with church for just, for just a short amount of time. Some of you, and I'm not making a, uh, I'm not making a bad statement, I'm stating a state of, statement of fact. Some of you have been involved in church, was out of church, in church, out of church, in church. Do I need to keep going? And there's never been, in that particular case, it's not been a stickability about it. Oh, but I don't like this, or I don't like that, or this is this, and this is that. We're fixing to address those things this morning. I've told you, this has been a very hard message to get together. And, and, and I could have stayed at the house and preached it to myself, and this is all to me this morning. I, this, is, this is a message that could be all to me today. But this is the thing that we've got to understand it's not about coming to the house of God and getting my way. It's coming to the house of God and getting, allowing God's will to be done in the hearts and lives. Amen? Now, I come to church, I'm just telling you. I come to church, Brother Hodo. I come to receive something from God. I didn't come to see Sister Bobby Joe. Show sure didn't. I didn't come to see you. I came to get in the presence of God. Brother Andy, you could do that at your house. You, I sure can. But you know, there's something about coming into the house of God with brothers and sisters of like faith and we following what the Word said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. We go back to the Scripture, biblical Scripture of what church was and it said that they went to the church daily. Hello? We start arguing about churches needing to cut back on services because, because of this, and we need to cut back on that. We need to cut back on that. Well, let me tell you something. We need to get back to what the Bible was talking about. And I'm not scheduling service every day, folks. But I'm telling us that we need to come back to the house of God. And we need to, when we're here, we need to start coming back and getting a hold of God. I've been in services where we never had a song sung and never had a sermon preach. We got into the house of God and somebody came to the altar before the 6 o'clock service time on a Sunday night. Somebody came to the altar and started praying and crying out to God and it was just like a domino effect. There was no singing. There was no preaching. There was no background music. <laughs> and the, we was in church for two and a half hours. Brother Andy, we can't do that. We got to get down to the restaurants before they close. I got peanut butter and jelly and the loaf bread at the house. You want something? We'll get that. The fact of the matter is we need to start coming in and being the church. It's not just about inside these four walls. It's about going out into the highways and the byways and bidding folks to come in. Amen? And I'll go even further to say it's about going and inviting them, following up, and bringing them to the house of God. Oh, Brother Andy, that's your job. That's the pastor's job. It's not just the pastor's job. It's each and every one of us. I'm a member of the church just like you're a member of the church. I've had preachers to tell me that I'm not supposed to go out and witness. I'm not supposed to, to worry about inviting anybody to church. I'm supposed to leave that to the members of the church. To which my response was, I thought I was a member too. I thought I attended too. I'm going to do the same thing. We had a little joke going this morning. Sister Carrie texted me because I had not given her a tithe envelope yet, and she said uh, she was asking how much to write the check for out for for our tithes and offerings this morning because she don't she don't let me have checks. She keeps them. She says my handwriting's awful. Nobody would be able to read it, 
and so I made a I made a joke upstairs. I said I said I guess I, I guess uh, she's wanting to make sure the pastor's going to still pay his tithes and offering. You know, I'd hate for somebody to find out he didn't pay his tithes and offering that morning. The fact of the matter is, I'm not going to tell you something that I'm not going to do. We're all in this together. And I'm going to I'm going to tell you one step further. It's not about it's not about church growth. We better hold the presses on that one. It's about striving for excellency in ministry opportunities. It's about striving to be excellent according to what God can do and through our lives, allowing God to work through our lives, being what God wants us to be while doing what God wants us to do. You go back into the Word of God, and we're going to be talking about this over the next few weeks. We're going to be talking about how the fact you can go back into the book of Acts and you can see where they added to the church daily. But it was more, but more importantly, everybody wants to look at those words. More importantly, you need to look at what was ahead. They was going out and they was preaching and witnessing the gospel outside of the church walls. They was going out. They was bringing folks to the church. They was those folks that was coming in. They was getting saved. How does all of that start? Start. Prayer makes the difference. We got to be prayed up if we're going to bring them in and get them saved. We got to be prayed up. Most of us has been in church for quite some time. But it's sad to say that we really don't know what the church is really about. Some do not know what the church has been called to do. Are we really aware of what we are blessed to be a part of? I am blessed to be a member of the Coosa Valley Church of God. I am blessed to be a member of God's church. I'm not talking about the church of God as a denomination. I'm talking about the church that God's coming back for. I'm blessed to be a member of that church. Sure, my name's written down on a roll book somewhere. But great and wonderful, that doesn't matter. Is my name written in the Lamb's book of life? That's what's going to make the difference. That's what's going to be all about in the future. We've got to have our name in the Lamb's book of life. Amen? I'm only on the second paragraph of three pages. (laughs) I hope you brought lunch. No, I'm joking. But the question remains is do we really fully understand what is required to be a part of the church of God, not the denomination? We live in a time when most people are encouraged to be a part of extracurricular activities. We're pressed everywhere we turn. I'm a member of the Pell City Ministerial Association. And, they're pre- and, and different ones are, are pressing or inviting for us to be a part of other groups and organizations. We're pressed. You guys are pressed. I am pressed to join civic clubs and social groups and volunteer programs. It seems as if which group or club that you're associated with is what is judging humanity. I'm a member of such and such group, so therefore I've got a a more elite status than somebody that's a member of another group. That's not true. In the grand scheme of things. We was talking about in Sunday school this morning. We talked about how that, that when a caterpillar. Y'all this was the craziest thing. When a caterpillar is, a, is, is just crawling around. He does not have in his mindset. What's going to happen after he, he spins that cocoon. 
But yet when he spins that cocoon and he goes in and he's there for a time period, then he breaks out of the cocoon and he's a beautiful butterfly. You know what? A lot of us are trying to figure out where our walk is with God, where we're at with God. You know what? That's great and wonderful. But I'm here to tell you something. We need to be pressed towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God and allow God to work the things out in our lives. Amen. We could ask the question, how many is going through a financial struggle? Hands would go up all over the house. How many is going through a physical trouble? How many is sick? How many, need, how many is going through a mental time where you need something in, in your life? You're going through a time of depression. You're going through a time of despair. You're going through different times, difficulties in life. Every one of us would raise our hands. I can't tell you how to get out of every problem you're facing. I can't tell you how to face those problems and, and get to the other side. But I can show you the man that can. I can show you the direction. I can point you to the direction to the one that is going to go right there with you. I may not be able to go to the bank with you when you're dealing with your financial problems. I may not be there at the doctor's office when you're going through health problems. I may not be with you in the midnight hour, but I know the one that can be. We got to get ourselves pointed to God. Amen. It's not about us, it's all about Him. I want to ask you a question this morning. I want you to think back over all of the civic and the social clubs that's going on around. Different ones are members of just different organizations. And I want you, and, and, and you know, different people, they, they support different groups and they support different uh, uh, causes. And those are, they're great and wonderful causes. Some, some every time the Red Cross truck pulls up, they're going to be up there, you know, giving blood. Some collect clothes and things like that to give to the foundry or to, another organization to help those in need. Some give to the United Way, the Girls and Boys Club. We got a food pantry up in, in town that, that we as a church, we're, we're, we're trying to get, I'm trying to get our schedules to work out toward the... Uh, me and the director, we can sit down and we can talk, and we're gonna, we're gonna try to work with something on that. And 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 the thing is, is there's so many other organizations that we could be involved with. There's nothing wrong with those. But I want you to think over those for just a moment, and I want to ask you something. What separates all of those groups? All of those organizations, all of those clubs, what separates them from the church? What separates that from the church? Well, I'm going to give you the answer. The church is much different. First of all, the church is not an organization. The church is not a club. The church is not a group of people that just gathers together. Uh oh Bust your bubble right there. In fact, the church, as we've already said... I, I let the cat out of the bag. My Lord and mercy, I said it early. The, in fact, the church is a living, breathing organism who genuinely makes up those that are born, born of God and live to serve Him. Our membership to the church never ceases. It just transfers and changes locations. We, as the body of Christ, we have a responsibility in the church. We have got a, we've got something that we've got to do in the church. We've got, we've got responsibility and we've got a plan that God God wants us to follow. 
Last Sunday we talked about how that that a youth leader told me about a skit that they did one time at their church and how that they dressed up a bunch of teenagers. One was uh, dressed up and they had on their, sh- their, their T-shirt, they had eyes and one had nose and one had hands and one had, you know, just different things. And, and one had liver wrote on it. So the eyes stood up and they said, I see the things that the body needs to see. The hand says, I grasp a hold of, and the foot says, I take the body, and the, you know, the ears, I hear, so on and so on. The mouth, I, provide, I help to provide nourishment. The liver looks around and says, well, what am I here for? And the liver, the guy that had the liver wrote on his shirt, he just laid down and said, well, I'm, I'm not here for a reason. Nobody really sees me. Nobody knows what I do. I'm just going to lay over here and go to sleep. Well, the different ones other, of the other teenagers, they started, wait a minute, hold up. You've got a purpose. You've got a reason. Each of us was created in the image of God Almighty. And we have a work that we're supposed to do. Brother Andy, I do not have a work. Boy, have I got a verse for you. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Ephesians 2 and verse 10. Look at what it says. It says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them in what in what God has created for us to do now we're we're we're, we're closing right here i have been god God laid something very heavy on my heart, and and I have been fighting it every time, uh, sitting over on the drums, and 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 I I've just been like I, I ain't going no, but I'm going to do it. Next Sunday, we're going to be looking at elements of the church. We're going to be looking at elements of the church. We're looking now at the essence of the church. We are the church. We're the church. Every one of us has a purpose. Every one of us has a reason. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you something. It's easy to give up. Brother Andy, that was awful depressing. Sure is. It is easy to give up. Studies have shown that in order for something to become a habit in your life, this is scientific proof. Studies have shown that in order for something to become a habit in your life, you must do it 21 times. And now it becomes a habit. 21 times in a row. Now it's a habit. Now let me tell you something else. This is an Andy Lambert study. This is an Andy Lambert scientific study. I know that's awful now. We stop being the church. We stop being the church and it's so much harder to start becoming the church again. Have you ever noticed that you missed service one time and you know you felt bad about it. You know it was really really rough because you missed service. You're here every whatever the case may be. I know some can't come 
Sunday nights and some can't come Wednesday nights but you're here every Sunday morning and I've called some of you or you've called some of you have called me on Sunday morning some have called me on Saturday night and have said brother Andy I'm not going to be there in the morning I'm not going to be there today I'm sick or this has happened, or this has happened, and I'm so sorry. I don't want to miss. My heart is at church. I wish that mentality would flow through a lot of folks. But have you ever noticed that that first time of missing service, it was, man, it was rough. I missed this last Wednesday night, and y'all just don't know how miserable I was. Wait a minute, the pastor wasn't here Wednesday night. Man, I could have stayed home. You did. Um, <laughs> why'd you say that? Shame on you, Hank. But here's the fact. You miss service and it's so hard. You miss the second one. Got a little bit easier. You missed the third time and it was just a little bit easier. And we keep on and we keep on missing. And all of a sudden, it's hard to go to church. A scientific fact that's proven. Who was the scientific study? I've witnessed it. I've witnessed it. We're the church, folks. It gets hard. I got it. It's hard to be the church when it seems like that others don't really care. It's hard to be the church when things seem to be turned upside down and not going right. It's hard to be the church when medical and financial and physical struggles when all of these things are compounded on us it's hard to be the church but that's when we need to be the church more than we've ever been the church before why? because we're showing the devil I'm pressing on you ain't getting the best of me I'm pushing on And I'm going to tell you something else. It shows God, you mean business. If you will, stand, for the, stand all over the house. To our live feed, we appreciate you joining us in service this, this morning. Appreciate you being here with us. May the good Lord bless you is our prayer. Amen and amen. Church, we need to be the church. I'm going to tell you something. The church... For the next few moments, we're talking about us. Okay? We're talking about Coosa Valley Church of God. We're talking about us. This church has faced, folks in this church has faced a lot of things.